Hello learners, I welcome you all to this session. Uh, this is in fact the remaining part of the chapter consumer behavior or buyer behavior. So in the uh, you know previous sessions we have seen first part of consumer or buyer behavior. In this session the remaining part will be covered. So in the previous session we have discussed that there are various factors that influence consumer behavior and those factors were uh, cultural, social, personal and psychological factors and besides we have also seen uh, the various kinds of differences between you know uh, organizational customers and individual customers and in individual customers also we could see the difference between the customer, the buyer and the consumer. Now in this session we are going to discuss the various kinds of buying roles that different people play you know when a purchase decision is made, when a purchase happens. There are certain people you know which influence or which, which make the, that purchase happen. So we will discuss that buying roles and then we will also talk about buying decision process. We will talk of social media influence on buying decisions and then we will talk of buying motives and types of buying decision behavior. So as I said when you uh, make a purchase or when a purchase happen there are you know group of people who make this happen or who influence this. So who are the group of people? They can be categorized into initiators, influencers, deciders, buyers and consumers. So there is someone who initiates, so there, there, there may be a need felt, you know, whosoever is the customer is, there may be a need felt, but somebody is there who is pushing it forward, That's yet, that yes you need it. For instance, suppose you are having a cup of uh, coffee with your neighbor and you are discussing that you it, it's it's getting difficult for you to commute your office uh, every day and it's a long distance and over the discussion uh, uh, say for example the um, neighbor is telling you that it is better if you buy a car and commute by your car because that will make your commute easier so your idea your need has been pushed by someone and the person who is pushing is initiator this initiator can be your neighbor can be your family friend can be your peer group, your colleague, anybody or maybe your family members, your own family members, they can act as initiator and then is influencer. So somebody who influences, you discussed it with the neighbor, neighbor pushed it, initiated it and after that when you are discussing it with your family members, your spouse also says that yes it is better if we need a car because even if we go out somewhere we need a car for family outing. So your decision is now, now being influenced. Right? There was a need felt, it was pushed and now it is being influenced. Your spouse may influence, your kids may influence, so it is influenced. And then the decider decides. You sit together in the family, you decide what to buy, which car to buy, what should be the budget etc. And then you also discuss it with the other people outside the family. I am just giving an, an example. This can happen in various other ways and so you are also discussing it with other people, with your friends, maybe your colleagues you are discussing and then you actually buy, then the buyer is buying and once you buy, until now, unless you bought it, you were only you know working for it and you are only perceiving that there is, a, there is an intense need which should, uh, which should be satisfied and to satisfy that need you have to buy a car. The moment you buy, uh, buy it and you start consuming it, you become the consumer, right? And then the real picture comes and then you actually realize as a consumer you realize whether it is actually satisfying your need or not, whether, whether the commodity has utility in it or not. So this is this stage when you decide the utility of the commodity that you have bought. So likewise if we see there, there are certain steps which are taken when a consumer or customer is buying a particular product. So what are those steps? The first step is need recognition. That means you perceive a need. That yes, there is a need. Once a need is perceived, how it is perceived? The initiator initiates it, then influencer influences. And then you decide that yes, this need should be satisfied and I should work on it, right? So you are perceiving a need. Then the second step is information search. Now you start looking for options that, that can fulfill your need, that have utility to fulfill your need or that have values to fulfill your need. That is why it is also called as seeking value. Now you are seeking value in the market, whether there is some offering in the market or not. And then the third step is alternate evaluation. What are the various alternates that are available in the market? You start evaluating it, assessing it and then you 
buy it then you make purchase decision then you are what you are going to do you are going to buy the value of the offering and once you buy it then you are making it in use that is value in use and consuming it and then comes your post purchase behavior either you are dissatisfied or you are satisfied or you are delighted right now let us discuss one by one in detail all these steps so the first step in buying process was need recognition this is the first stage as, as i said first of all you have to recognize that there is a need or there should be an intense need see there are many needs they are competing with each other we have limited resources and needs are unlimited so we cannot satisfy all our needs so we have to make an make a choice it is a science of choice that is why we say right so we have to make a choice we cannot satisfy all our needs so then we need to see what is the intense need if the need is intense you'll start working off on it and if the need is not intense maybe you can postpone it for later or maybe you can defer your decision to buy that particular commodity so at this step first of all there should be a need felt that need felt should be intense so much so that it gives you motive to buy right and then need may be activated through various stimuli also first as i said it can be you know from your inner self it can be from the felt need that you are feeling it but there are you know other stimuli also which influences or which tells you that this particular need is and these stimuli can be marketing stimuli and other stimuli it is also considered as external stimuli and internal stimuli external stimuli which is not related to your organization or which is not uh, you know in your hand as a company right and the in external stimuli is vested with the customers and then what is in in this stage the attractive marketing mix is made so that it can stimulate need of the customer right what are the various stimuli as i said there can be marketing stimuli there can be other stimuli or internal stimuli and external stimuli so the external stimuli which we have already discussed personal factors psychological factors social factors and cultural factors right these are the factors which influences a you know buyer decision of you know buying a commodity whether to buy or not to buy you know it is affected by these four factors personal psychological social and cultural we have already discussed this in the previous session so the other stimuli is are you know marketing stimuli that is product price promotion and place marketing mix for you know tangible commodities and if your commodity is such that it is you know it's some uh, element of intangibility is also there or maybe your offering is intangible entirely in nature then your marketing mix comprises of seven p's uh, and three p's gets added to it people process and physical evidence right so maybe you design your product in a way the the, the product is so attractive that you know it stimulates the buyer to buy it or maybe your prices are very competitive it is alluring customers to come and buy or maybe your promotional campaign was such that it my customers can could uh, actually connect it and they uh, want to buy and so on and so forth so you can work on all those marketing mix you are preparing a, a, your marketing mix in such a way that the customer is you know kind of stimulated to buy your offering in the market likewise like product price pr pr price and promotion place suppose your uh, you know the people in your organization who are working the sales the sales people who are working with the organization sometimes they are so efficient that they you know make others make the customers feel need for a particular offering that they are offering so even the efficiency of the people also you know uh, works as stimuli to make some purchase to happen the second step is information search when you know the need is aroused there is al already an intense need and now you want to fulfill that particular need you want to satisfy that particular need as a customer then the second stage start that you start looking for various kinds of values you start looking for various kinds of offerings that that, that are there in the market so that your need can be satisfied or you know it can solve your problem so if the consumer's drive is strong and a satisfying product is near at hand the consumer is likely to buy it then suppose i have a strong need and maybe next door in uh, in the next door shop that particular offering is available which can satisfy my need i can buy it then and there but if not then the consumer may simply store the need in memory or undertake an information search related to the need impulsively 
I have gone somewhere, I am very thirsty and uh, in the next, at the next uh, step there is a shop which is offering, uh, which is selling water, um, bottled water, I will go and buy it, fine. But suppose the need is such, you know, that the problem is such, the, uh, the demand is such that it is not immediately available, then you take some time to decide. You start looking for various alternatives. So first of all, what do you do? You try to list down various alternatives which are available which can satisfy your need and for that you need to have information and the information can be obtained from several sources they may be personal sources they may be commercial sources they may be public sources they may be experiential sources so personal sources may be family friends neighbors and acquaintances as i said anybody who is around you with whom you interact throughout the day right and then the commercial sources such as advertising sales people dealers packaging, displays, public sources such as mass media, consumer rating organizations and experiential sources such as handling and examining the user uh, or examining or using the product. You are touching a product uh, or you are seeing a product and you are attracted towards it and now you want to buy it. So that is called experiential sources. So in this step what we are doing, you are trying to collect certain kinds of information, various information that can help you to decide, you know. Number one, whether to go for that particular offering or not and if yes, then how to go about it, right? The third step is, you know, evaluation of all the alternatives which are available in the market. You have listed out in the second stage or step, you have already listed down the various alternatives which is available in the market. Now in this step, what do you do? You, try, you start evaluating those. You start assessing the values which are being, you know, offered by various companies through their brands, you start evaluating it, you start assessing it, you start uh, calculating or count, counting their pluses and minuses, their advantages and disadvantages, right? So evaluation of the attributes or features of product of different brands that you do. For example, a product like tea has certain common attributes such as taste, flavor, strength, aroma, color, number of cups per packet, price, etc. So you start evaluating on all those aspects. Or maybe you have evaluation of a set of characteristics of the product and brands such as the quality you start you know evaluating the quality of various brands you start comparing one brand with the other so you are evaluating the qualities of uh, various offerings the prices of various offerings the distinctiveness uh, which is available you know and then evaluation of brand images and brand concepts also that you do and once you start doing all such things what you are doing you are eliminating in the process you are striking out that this uh, particular offering or brand is no because this has this limitation. So you narrow, narrow down your uh, list of you know available alternatives. You strike out some of the offerings and you keep you are there with some of the alternatives, right? So you reduce the number of alternatives based on certain criteria and, and now of the available the reduced number then you have to make choice which one to buy or which one to uh, purchase, right? Occasionally, consumers may use an evaluation process permitting trade-offs among different alternatives. Sometimes you negotiate also on the basis of the uh, you know, evaluation that you have done. On the basis of that, maybe you, you start negotiating with different kinds of brands, right? And then that is why it is said that this is a very critical stage in buying process because this is the stage which decides whether the customer will buy your commodity or not or your offering or not, right? So that is why it is a very, very critical stage. Needless to mention that social media has a great influence on this, you know. In fact, in the entire thing, right from the, you know, um, arising of need, right from the feeling of need, the social media has an influence, right? Social media is acting as an important factor and it is gaining greater importance day by day. Why? Because you can get all the reviews very quickly. Right? On the social medias, your friends, they are using it and then they quickly uh, post their views uh, and so on and so forth. So social media is also influencing the buying decision, especially at this stage, especially at this step, the social media has a great impact, you know, on the choice that the customer is going to make. So it is very, very important now for the companies, for the marketers that they has to be visible online also. And not only visible, they have, they have to be prominently visible online, right? And then the next stage is purchase decision. Now, you felt that need 
you started looking for all the alternatives which are available in the market then evaluated you evaluated all the alternatives which are available in the market now you have to decide you know of several alternatives which one are you going to buy which is the brand which is the offering which is the company you are going to choose you know to satisfy your need so the stage in which customer is actually buying the product is called the purchase decision stage or step the customer decides here whether he or she wants to buy or does not want to buy and if yes so what where when and how to buy the purchase decision may be influenced by attitudes of spouse friends and relatives cost of the product benefits of the products etc so even at this stage your decision is influenced and purchase decision includes decisions with regard to product brand dealer quantity quality timing and payment so at this stage you were deciding whether to buy or not to buy if not to buy well and good if you may you may want to postpone it you know considering certain aspects you may want to postpone it or defer your purchase uh, decision but if the answer is yes that you want to buy it then you have to decide what to buy from where to buy which is the company we, you would rely on and how to buy it and then comes the last step in this is post purchase behavior so unless this step until this step you know everything was perceived you were just thinking need was there and you thought that a particular commodity can you perceived that a particular commodity commodity or offering can deliver the value which can satisfy your need but now this is the stage that you have actually you know made the purchase decision you have purchased it and now you are consuming it now this stage is very very critical for the marketers for the companies why is very critical critical because this stage is the kind of you know uh, period or or stage of result the marketers the companies are getting results because the customers are already they have already consumed it or they are already consuming it so now the perceived value is converted into actual value so what they perceived and what they got on the basis of that on the comparison of that they can either be unsatisfied customer they perceived the value like this but they what with they got was this lesser right so unsatisfied customer they perceived the value and they received the same value right so this is satisfied customer so this may result in satisfied customer and they perceived something they perceived that they'll get this value but what they actually experienced uh, or when they consumed what they actually realized that they have got this value so in this case the customer is happy the customer is delighted and having delighted customers is you know the aim of each and every marketer each and every company who is a profit making company right and even if not profit making company then also having delighted customer is the ultimate aim is the ultimate goal of the organization now up till now we have seen that there were certain stages or there were certain steps which are followed when the customer is going to make purchase decision now we'll see what are the various types of buying decision behavior that the customer you know shows or portrays right so buying decision behavior is different for different types of offering for example you know buying a toothpaste and buying a car so the way you buy a toothpaste is different than the way you are going to buy a car there will be a lot of difference so on the basis of that or or considering all these factors we can classify the buying decision behavior into four categories one is complex buying behavior the other is dissonance reducing buying behavior third is variety seeking buying behavior and fourth is habitual buying behavior complex buying behavior when buyers are buying an expensive commodity or infrequently bought commodities or products right then the behavior that they will show will be called as complex buying behavior why because in buying this kind of commodity which are expensive which are not frequently bought the buyers are highly involved and highly involved when i say highly involved it means they are highly involved in the the whole purchase process and they do lot of researches before buying such products so on the basis of the they think you know n number of times so, and they need a lot of information so they uh, spend quite some time in researching you know for that particular commodity so that is why the uh, commodities which are expensive or which is infrequently bought for example you are going to buy a car or maybe you are going to buy a house 
then in that case the kind of behavior that you show as a customer is complex buying behavior the second is dissonance reducing buying behavior when buyers are highly involved in the purchase decision but has difficulties determining the differences between brands right the commodities are uh, expensive so you are going to make a heavy investment in that right but at the same time the offerings that are there in the market the alternatives that are there in the market they are so close to each other that you are finding it difficult to decide which one to choose so in that case the kind of behavior that you show as a customer is called as dissonance reducing buying behavior because whenever you are making a decision you are worried all the time whether you are going to you know regret after purchase or you will be happy so the buyer here itself is so uh, they are so confused you know that again they sometimes even while making the purchase decision they do kinds of researches again and again right so for example when you are going to choose between expensive mobile phones so the mobile phones which is expensive and there are certain you know companies brands which are offering you the same kind of quality appearance and services and apps whatever you want in the a mobile phone and it is so close to each other the competitive products are so close to each other that you are getting uh, confused right so you take even more time so that is why it is called as dissonance reducing buying behavior and then comes habitual buying behavior there are certain kinds of commodities for which you don't make you know uh, you don't take much time in picking that up that are in your regular use so you have a you have a habit of going and picking those commodities so every such commodity is called as habitual you know uh, or when you are going to buy uh, such kind of commodity then you are showing habitual buying behavior so in this kind of situation buyers have very little involvement in such products they have their set of preferences and on the basis of those preferences they just pick the commodities and fill their baskets they are frequently bought products they are used you know they you buy it uh, frequently they are recurring uh, products for example when you are going to uh, go for grocery shopping you don't think much the toothpaste that you buy every time you will pick up the same toothpaste with, without giving a second thought right if you are buying for example you are buying toothpaste or you are you are uh, in fact going to buy you know tea leaf in that case also you have a habit you have a taste which is developed so without giving much time to it you will put those commodities you will pick those commodities and you will buy it so when you are showing this kind of behavior this kind of pattern it is called as habitual buying behavior and then comes variety seeking buying behavior there are certain commodities or and services you know in which the customer seeks varieties it is not that they are satisfied with one variety or not satisfied with uh, one variety it is just that they want to change they want to switch the brand just to experience the difference or maybe just to experience the variety so in this case the consumer is showing variety seeking buying behavior again i would say that it is not because that they are not satisfied with a particular commodity or service it is just because they want to experience they want to taste different thing for example you know when you are eating out when you are making decision for that many times it happens that you want to uh, change that today we have had this maybe after a week when we are going to have uh, uh, you know go going to eat out in the restaurants maybe i'll try another restaurant for different taste for different flavors now we'll discuss of different kinds of buying motives because buying motives are uh, the stimuli which stimulates the consumer to buy a particular product right according to professor dj duncan buying motives are those influences or considerations which provide the impulses to buy induce action and determine choice in the purchase of goods and services so motives can be product buying motive or maybe patronage buying motives so product buying motives again can be categorized into emotional product buying motives and rational product buying motives and patronage buying motives also can be categorized into emotional patronage buying motives and rational patronage buying motives let us first see what is product buying motives so product buying motives refer to those influences and reasons which induce a buyer to choose a particular product over the other product the your product is such the offering is such that it is chosen it is preferred over the other and they include the physical attraction of the product that is the design shape dimension size color package performance of the uh, product or offering and maybe their price the competitive prices that they are offering 
the psychological attraction of the product that is the enhancement of the social prestige or status of the purchaser through its possession suppose you are you want to emulate someone and you are seeing that uh, that particular person is buying a particular commodity just to emulate you may also go and buy that, that buy that particular commodity right as i said that uh, product buying motives can be emotional product motives and can be rational product motives so emotional product motives you know the reasons for the emotional product motives may be the pride or prestige if you want to show that or maybe emulation or imitation as i discussed maybe affection for a particular brand comfort a particular offering is providing you the desire for distinctiveness you want to be distinct in the society you want to be different in the society that is why you are buying a particular product or maybe desire for recreation or pleasure or maybe habit so likewise there are various attributes of product on the basis of it or or the attributes of product itself they are inducing inducing you the customer or motivating the customer to buy and then rational product motives behavior i would say or motive so reasons for uh, rational product motives are safety or security you want to ensure safety or security so you are going for a particular commodity for insurance uh, life insurance for example life insurance or maybe a particular lock and key or safes which you are using in your house and then you want to see the economy when you are using it so if uh, the commodity involves the usage cost say for example you are using a car or maybe motorcycle right so when you are using it you are you have to incur cost so you will buy that particular commodity which is incurring less cost which which gives you economy and then the prices suppose the uh, prices of a particular offering is relatively lower than the other then you that gives you motive to buy it and then suitability utility or versatility durability of a particular commodity right and convenience that is why they are called rational product motives so they have valid reasons they have rational reasons for you you know to buy it and through their rational reasons they are convincing you or they are stimulating the customer to buy it and then comes patronage buying motives the reasons of buyers buying from a particular shop maybe that is you know can be seen as a patronage buying motive sometimes the consumers prefer to buy from a particular shop only and there can be various reasons even those reasons can be categorized into two parts one is emotional patronage buying motives and the other is rational patronage buying motives for the emotional patronage buying motives you would see there can be various reasons such as the appearance of the shop is such that you like it and you want to go there again and again maybe the display style of the shop you know is something that you actually like and you want to go there because you find it easier to pick things recommendation from near and dear ones your uh, you know the people who are very close to you they are recommending you that they are satisfied and they are recommending you and that is why you also want to go to that particular shop only or maybe imitation again you want to imitate someone you want to be like someone and if he or she is buying from from a particular shop you will prefer to go that shop only that likewise prestige or maybe habit and then the other thing is rational patronage buying motive such as convenience it is that shop or that location is very convenient to you that is why you uh, prefer you know to take your commodity from there or for, from that particular shop or store or maybe the store is offering you the lower price it offers the credit facilities that attracts you to go or the kinds of services that that particular store or shop is offering the efficiency of the salesman even they are they are so good you know in establishing a kind of relationship with you that you always want to go to that particular shop or store or maybe that store is providing you wide range of choices or maybe the reputation of shop so likewise there are you know uh, certain rational reasons also which uh, influence a buyer to buy from a particular sh uh, shop or store so now in this session we have seen that when we are going to make a purchase decision there are various things you know which influences us there are various stimuli those stimuli can be internal stimuli and external stimuli the buying process begins with the discovery and recognition of an unsatisfied need or want again i would say that intense need and it becomes a drive then consumer begins search for information this search gives rise to various decisions and finally the purchaser evaluates those alternatives and the purchase decision is made then the buyer evaluates the purchases and decides whether he is satisfied or he is not satisfied or whether he is happy or not happy 
So majorly we have seen that four types of buying decision behavior are portrayed by the customers. The complex buying behavior that was for expensive and durable goods which involves lots of researches, dissonance reducing buying behavior you know where the products are very closely the differentiation is so close that you are uh, finding it difficult to decide and then the habitual buying behavior which involve a very little involvement and variety seeking buying behavior where the customer wants to change the brand to switch the brand for different exposure so as a marketer you have to take care of all these aspects you have to understand all these things so as you can cater to your customers uh, in a proper manner and you can have delighted customer in your business. So this is the end of this discussion today. See you next session. Happy learning.